Welcome back. This is Dynamic Loading, Part 2. Last time we introduced the concept and we talked about two things. Listening to our body's natural signals and generating evidence. Today, I'm going to give you some specifics about how to apply it within a training week. So let's shrink me down. Put me over here. Now look, how did this start? So coming out of the last Winter Olympics, uh, Niels van der Poel broke a couple world records and won two gold medals, 5K, 10K. And he wrote a book, How to Skate a 10K. And that book was quite a sensation in my peer group and in other people's peer groups. And it talked about something called Swedish 5-2. Five, five days on, two days off. And the two days off were back-to-back -back days. And everybody focused on the amazing amount of work that Niels was able to do in his five days on, in his on days. But what I noticed was that he was taking two days off, back to back. It was totally radical. At the sharp end, everybody trains hard. And that's just a given. So Niels's training, while massive, was not particularly surprising. If you've hung around with speedy Ironman athletes, males and females, you will see some big training over long time horizons. So I was familiar with that part. But the recovery was totally something I'd never come across before. Now, Niels included an appendix. And in that appendix was what he did every day. And I dug into that appendix and I was like, hey, this guy is doing way more rest than just an average of two days a week. In his base period, 41% of the days were off. And then I had the opportunity to interview Niels and I became friends with his coach, Johan. And something I found out was Niels actually had way more rest than that even because he had three retirements over his career. Uh, after he was world junior champion, after his first Olympics, and then after his second Olympics. So he, if you look at his total training load over a four year time horizon, a time horizon that ends with some very good performances, world junior champion, and then in the second Olympics, world record holder, world champion, gold medalist. Um, so if you actually look at the amount of low stress days across a four year time horizon, very low. And then I got to know what Niels's life was like when he was training and he was living in Johan's cabin a lot of the time. Very simple life, work, sleep, train. And his work stress was low because his work was his training. So you could actually say it was sort of sleep, eat, train. Uh, very straightforward. Now, most of us will not be able to replicate the simplicity, nor will we be able to replicate Niels's superhuman uh, genetic gifts. So we've got a simple life, genetic gifts, and a very good work ethic combined with this radical recovery. So there's a lot going right in Niels's total program. So seeing Niels rest more than the 5-2, um, I realized it might be okay to do less loading days. So my target is, and this would be a target that I'm recommending for you if you're aspiring to be a top amateur, would be a maximum of four loading days. And then I'm going to recommend a deep off season, at least once a year. So 28 easy days. And then you're going to have things that come up across the year, freshening for races and unexpected illness. Maybe you're going to have to deal with a, a niggle. You're going to have to back off for additional days. So when I look backwards over the last year of applying what I'm going to explain to you, I have 175 easy days in my year. And at the same time, my average volume is the low 800s in terms of annual hours. So that's about 16 hours a week. Now, as a result of all those easy days, there is a big delta between my loading days and my easy days. And there's also across the year, a big delta between my peak loading periods and my standard loading periods. 
So you've got peaks in the week and peaks in the year. And this enables me to bring myself to a very high level of performance relative to my potential. It's not necessarily relative to Niels. I mean, obviously he's much more fit than me and most of us listening to this video. But the idea here is getting close to our own potential. And so that's what you should be evaluating. How are you doing relative to yourself? So I want to explain the week. So the two is two back-to-back -back easy days every single week. And easy is whatever it needs to be. Uh, I take a rule of thumb, which is it's half my average daily load. So if I'm at 14 hours, an easy day is about, that'd be two hours a day, average. My easy day is going to be about an hour. It's going to be easy. Not stressful. Uh, and that's how I do it. So if you up that to 21 hours a week, that's an average of three hours a day. Your easy day is going to be about 90 minutes. But really easy is as easy as it needs to be. And you should be thinking low stress. So easy doesn't mean I'm so busy at work, I couldn't train. That's not an easy day. And easy doesn't mean my kid kept me awake all night and so I didn't train. That's not an easy day. Easy means it was a low stress day and I did some active recovery and I absorbed my prior training. That's really what it means. And so all the other stuff in our lives that can create stress needs to be managed within the overall program. Now for Niels, his life was simple. He didn't have to figure that out. You as a working athlete or a student athlete or even an elite dealing with sponsors, getting yourself fed and all this other stuff, you got to figure that out. You got to figure out how to make the easy days low stress days rather than I'm just kicking back because I'm so exhausted. So bear that in mind. Now for the five, this is what I do. I think two, one, two. And that one is a midweek easy day. So really what we've got is four loading days and then it's split with an easy day. And then there's the two easy days at the end of the week. And they're also at the beginning of the week, you know, if you're thinking on a seven day cycle. Now, when I started this, my easy days were Sunday, Monday, and that could work well for you if you're a working athlete. Why Sunday? Get your life in order, spend some time with your family. It's sort of like the personal day. Monday, start the week off with some big wins up front on the work front, and that'll make this sustainable. Now, currently, it's my weekend where I'm taking the easy days because that's when I got the most stuff going on. School started again today, so uh, Monday to Friday, I'm going to have a lot more flexibility in my life. Now, I think in terms of twos, you'll see there, number one, number two, Monday, Tuesday for me, but just day one, day two for you. Green day, peppy day. Now, either of those days could be a stressful day. Green because of duration. Peppy, again, because of load, but that'll normally have an intensity component in it. Now, peppy to me, can, it can be tempo or it could be red zone, but it'll be kind of going back and forth. Now, why is that? Now that I'm a higher level athlete, if I need to, I can reduce the dose, reduce the duration of my green zone day, and I can turn that into an active recovery day. So I can still keep training uh, and benefit from that training. Now, and I can flip that. We're going to get into that in a sec. Then an easy day, strong. What does strong mean? Well, strong is usually some, some big gear or some hills or endurance and strength, paddles in the pool, medley swimming in the pool, that kind of day. So I have a day, peppy, which may be more velocity focused, strong, which is going to be more strength endurance focused. Um, John Hellemans loves that kind of training. You'll see it in our strength chapter. Uh, the sections that John wrote are kind of in sport strength. Last day, green. Now those green days. I just published uh, with John and Julie's help combination workouts. If you're a multi-sport athlete, triathlete, you're a runner who cycles, a swimmer who cycles. Um, the do everything day is a great one to throw in for these green days. Whole body fitness. Likewise, big day training. Training that is stressful because of the duration and you're training across uh, either a half day or an entire day 
if you're an Ironman athlete, you can put these in. Now, with these green days at the beginning and the end of this five-day block, if you have the ability to recover, you can actually give yourself three or four easier days, lower stress days before that peppy day. Likewise, if you get to day four and you're like, I'm not sure I'm really ready for this strength day, you can just swap it. Put the green day on day four, put the strength day as the last day in the micro cycle. If you're still not feeling it, just bump it to the first day of the next micro cycle and then follow it with a green day. So what you need is this flexibility, but having these green days that you're swapping around in day one, day two, or day four, day five will give you the ability to manage the load. Now remember, the most stressful days will be days with the higher doses of the tempo or the red zone. So you need to be careful with dosing that. You also need to be careful that you keep the green days green. Now there'll be some days where you want to push your duration capacity and your green day will become a stressful day just because it goes beyond your current general capacity. That's fine. When I was starting out, pretty much all my days were green days. I would throw in a little bit of strength, but I would not have the capacity to handle much specific strength and I had zero capacity to handle the peppy stuff. So I had no peppy days. So this program that I just explained is for a competitive amateur. If you're a developing athlete, it's going to be primarily endurance and strength. And how will you know what your category is? Well, you can look at your race performance, but you can also just look at what happens in the 24 to 48 hours after you do a key day. Are you absorbing that day relatively quickly? How do you handle intensity? If your intensity tolerance is poor, or you decouple, so your heart rate will just move away from your power or pace on what you think is your green zone training, that means your general capacity limited. So you gotta lower your green zone target and be patient and develop that general fitness. So I hope this helps and I hope it gives you some practical tips that you can apply. Using this method will get you quicker gains and you're gonna feel better getting them. The other thing is over long time horizons, you will have less downtime. You're going to get more work done using the preemptive rest. And that's a key part of what makes this effective. As a working athlete, having these 175 easy days in every year means you're not going to have to dedicate your life to your sport. You're going to have other things that you can bring into your life. You can diversify that identity. And then when it's time to focus, you'll have the energy and the mojo to focus. Hit the subscribe button. More coming for you in future episodes. Next series is going to be on recovery, my thoughts about recovering. Thanks for listening.